discuss on design and technology overview and here I will explain how an integrated circuit is designed and then how it is processed that means both technology and design basic technology and design you should know before going to the VLSI processing and this is one uh, view graph from where you will be knowing how from the very beginning the chip is designed and then going to the technology fabrication. Now any development of VLSI chips or any development of any IC chips a close interaction is required between the designer and the technology people because here the two groups of people will be working one group is design group another group is technology group and design group their first job after identifying the circuit they want to make then the first phase of design is the floor plan. What do you mean by the floor plan? For example, if you are going to design a microprocessor chip and microprocessor chip has got different functional blocks. For example, CPU is there, memory block is there, IO interface are there. So those blocks, how do you put on VLSI chip? That means the planning of the proper location of individual blocks is known as the four plan that is the first job you have to do. After that you have to go for a sequence of designs which is one is known as architectural design then logic design and then circuit design. Logic design is the gate level design that means if you are this is basically for digital VLSI chips I am talking about. So the gate level design means either you are going to have the MOS CMOS gates or CMOS logic or TTL logic or ECL logic or whatever logic you are using. Using that logic the basic gates how do you place those gates to achieve that particular functional blocks. Okay, that is known as the, the, the logic design and before that is known as architectural design. The floor planning what you did the placement of individual blocks in different location is that means you are defining the architecture and when it is finalized then you came to logic and after logic design is complete, completed then you are going to circuit level design that means how the individual logic gate is realized using transistors and other components. So these are the three steps architectural design, logic design and circuit design. Next step is the verification of the above design steps. After circuit design is over then you have to do some simulations and you have to verify that whether your purpose is served that means the specification is achieved and when you are satisfied with the performance after simulation of the circuit then you have to go for layout design and that layout design is here you see this is the layout design block here. So in this layout design means the transistor level design is transistor how do you fabricate in silicon. That means the when you came to the transistors for example bipolar transistor if you are designing then what will be the emitter size, collector size, base size etc. etc. If it is a MOS design then source and drain area what is the gate laying and uh, what should be the isolation region between one MOS to another MOS etc. etc. This is the layout. Layout is basically the top view of any 
transistors either it is a bipolar or MOS whatever it is the top view that means in the layout design you are generating some rectangles which you have seen here in this particular figure the several rectangles are there and these rectangles and this side you see small rectangle these are basically the bonding pads for interconnection of different points to external world. So once the layout is finalized and then that layout dimension is known and once the layout dimension is known then you can have the simulation for delay gate delays etc or rise time fall time of any gates. So that means delay extraction can be done using standard softwares and then if you are satisfied with this result of the simulation or the if you achieve your goal that means the delay etc is within your tolerable range or limit then you will proceed further. What is the next step? Next step is the mask generation. You see here this is the mask generation block. So mask generation means in layer by layer you are going to design or you are going to make the mask. Layer by layer means the a in case of bipolar transistors for example the emitter you want to make the emitter is a layer base diffusion is a layer okay isolation diffusion is a layer like that so each layer will have a separate mask so once all the masks are generated then uh, you have to go for the fabricatory uh, fabrication now this particular column and this column these two column are are designing part design part once design is finished means in the design area you are in, you are ending with some mask once the mask is fabricated then the mask is transferred the mask are transferred to the fabrication laboratory then coming under the area of technology people now this column here the steps are written this is the technology area now here the first is once the mask is transferred to the, the fabrication lab they will start fabrication that is wafer fabrication and wafer fabrication how it is being done how the step is used to fabricate certain layers that we will understand in the next slide. I will explain in detail how the step by step fabrication is being done what do you mean by the layer how the layer is made etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Now once the wafer fabrication means the processing of the wafers is completed then these completed wafers are sent for testing and this testing is the wafer level testing. There are several level of testing in BLSI chips and wafer level testing is done using the help of certain probing station. So there no bond pins or the uh, uh, the encapsulation before that test is before encapsulation no pins are available on whole wafer you have to probe the individual the bonding pads here these are the bonding pads using certain thin probe and small probe small dimension of the order of 5 micron or 10 micron they, so that probe is connected with some wire outside and then you test the chips and the wafer level testing you may find some chips are okay and some are defective or bad. So ultimately those defective chips has to be marked. For example a 4 inch diameter you are you ended up with say 10,000 chips. Out of 10,000 chips wafer level testing you may find about say 200 or 300 chips uh, or say 1000 chips are faulty. Now those faulty chips are marked with certain inking arrangement from the machine and those marked faulty chips are rejected before final encapsulation of individual chips. So now 
once the good chips are are selected then this wafer is sliced into small pieces and individual pieces are assembled in a package and first step is the bonding you this is the bonding pads and these bonding pads are connected with the pin which you have seen in a chip some pins are coming external and internally from the pad to the pin head using some gold wire or aluminum wire its a connection is being made so that is known as a bonding i will show you in the next view graph how bonding is being done next the packaging once packaging is over then after packaging it looks like uh, this and it will again go for testing because during your bonding and packaging some of the chips will again be damaged because maybe some of the chips bonding is not proper bonding means connection from one bond pad to the uh, the actual bond pad to the actual pin maybe dry soldering is there okay so because of those reason some of the chips will be faulty and those faulty chips is, is to be thrown and then you will get the actual package chip and that may not be very large in number and it depends how how your technology is standardized how good is your clean room how standardized is individual steps depending on that you will get the yield of a particular chip yield is another important point we have to consider because it is directly related to the cost of ic okay now i will show you a 3d structure of bjt and mosfet and here you can see so the base emitter and collector these are the three these are the top view and the cross sectional structure is shown here and this is the circuit symbol the base collector and emitter and you see here the if you see the cross section now you find the collector is basically the n plus and this is the n substrate and this is connected with this n plus and is the collector and after that p diffusion has been introduced and this p diffusion will give you the base electrode and in the p diffusion another n plus diffusion is is again introduced and this n plus diffusion will give you the emitter so this is the in the cross section schematic you will find this bottom is the buried layer and this is known as a buried layer because this layer is inside the silicon all the individual steps i will explain in subsequent classes in detail this is only an overview so now the emitter base and collector this particular region is the active region or intrinsic region similarly if you look into a mosfet then you will see in the top this is the gate this is the source and this is the drain in the top view you can see and if you see the cross section schematic then you will see this source and drain is that this is the n plus and n plus and in between this point to this point is the channel region and this is the circuit symbol okay so how a transistor either it is a bjt or mosfet looks like when you take a cross section it's shown here now the details of a bipolar layout bipolar transistor layout i am now discussing now here you see in the last slide you have seen the planar view as well as the vertical view now in this diagram the planar view along with some of the dimensions is shown here the the outward this rectangle this one is known as the isolation and the next rectangle is known as the buried layer after that there is another rectangle is known as this the bigger one is known as the base diffusion and then this is the collector contact diffusion then this is the base contact and there is the emitter diffusion this is the emitter contact now here you can see the emitter contacts must be within the emitter region base contact this is the base contact rectangle that base contact rectangle must be within the base region this is the whole thing is the base and this collector contact must be within the collector region now the smallest dimension in this particular layout 
is the emitter contact window. So this is one window you see here and this window in this particular transistor is about 10 micron by 10 micron. Now the emitter size will be larger than the emitter contact window because I told you the emitter contact must be at the center of the emitter diffusion region. So emitter diffusion region is this region is the emitter diffusion region this rectangle and here in all four sides we have given 5 micron tolerance this is 5 micron this is 5 micron this is 5 micron and this is again 5 micron. So, so, so the what will be the emitter area emitter area will be this 10 micron this side 5 and this side 5 so it will be total 20 micron. So that means although the contact window is 10 micron by 10 micron the emitter diffusion will be about the 10 plus 5 plus 5 that means 20 micron. So 20 micron by 20 micron side. Now this emitter is inside the base at the same time we have to take a base contact. So this is the base contact contact means you open a window and through which metal is deposited and you can take the contact from the base and the vertical diagram you have seen the how the base is there you can see the earlier diagram here you see base is here the base contact is here okay. So base contact is here the emitter contact is here and you see the tolerance this side tolerance 5 micron this side tolerance 5 micron can you see here this is 5 micron tolerance and this is 5 micron okay. So now uh, if you if you see here that base is inside the base contact is inside the base diffusion and at the same time the collector contact is inside the collector diffusion and in NPN transistor the collector will be the epitaxial region which is the N and in N epitaxial region you are going to diffuse the base region. Now if I explain little bit elaborately you will find that if this is the substrate you see this is a substrate and, and here is this buried layer is done inside the inside the silicon if I look here this is the P substrate silicon then here is the N plus buried layer. Now after that you have isolated the region and this is very very important in case of the in case of monolithic circuits because you see you are making a, a, a device here for example here you are making a transistor here and another transistor here okay and now these transistors will have a, a collector here the N plus and here it will have a another collect N plus buried layer. Now this is the you see this is the two transistor if I think and these are P substrate and this is N type epitaxial layer. Now this N plus and N plus is connected. Now this N plus and this N plus they are through N this is connected. Now if it is a it is a base here for example here is another base here and this base is a P this is N this is N this is P this is a base and this is also a base. Now in between base you have this is the emitter this is emitter. Similarly here if you draw this will be a base and this is a emitter region and this is N plus emitter this is uh, the P base and this is N. Now you are taking one base contact and this is uh, the N and N plus is basically the collector. Now this is the collector that you have to take a contact of the collector from the top and here I should explain one thing that in a monolithic transistors and discrete transistor the one of the difference is in a monolithic transistor you have to take all the contacts from the top. In a discrete transistor the contacts collector base emitter are not all taken from the same plane that is from the top and there you can take a contact from the bottom also in discrete transistors. And what you get transistor in the laboratory in your circuit laboratory you are using transistors and those are basically discrete transistors okay and there you may take the collector contact from the bottom and in a particular transistor 
the n pin transistor the n is the you see let me draw here this is uh, the n plus now you take a contact here you take a contact here you take a contact here this is the n plus contact so this is basically the emitter and this is the p contact this will be the base and this is another collector contact c now the collector base and emitter this three will total give you a transistor now here you find that this n plus and this n plus is connected via n is connected with the n n plus and n is not a junction this n plus n is not a junction that means here we found this transistor and this transistor collectors are interconnected they are not isolated but any particular circuit the individual components must be isolated from each other if it is not isolated then the all the collectors is connected through the substrate because this is the n n plus n it is connected if you take say for example here you are taking a contact n plus n plus contact you are taking the collector so you see this collector contact is coming here it is connected here so it is connected here is connected there so this transistor is also connected now instead i can separate it out how if i diffuse a p plus region here p plus so you see the p and p plus are interconnected here similarly here you make another p plus here now you see by this p plus and p here is p plus and p and in between a region which is the n n region here and here is also n region so these two n regions will be isolated from the p if this p is kept as an extreme negative potential this p plus and p and this n plus and n will constitute a junction which is a pn junction and if this pn junction is reverse biased then there is no cur no current will flow only the leakage current now this principle is used to isolate one transistor to other transistor so you are creating some islands in a particular wafer and that islands are isolated by this p plus diffusion and this p plus diffusion will make a pn junction with the island and if you apply this p plus means the substrate is p if you apply this substrate at an extreme negative potential so that this pn junction is reverse biased and no current will flow okay in this way you can isolate one transistor to other transistor that means here now you look at the diagram so the periphery outside periphery here this is an isolation region and this isolation region similarly if you make another transistor here another rectangle you draw here the side of this this is here you have seen this cross section diagram but here this is a planar structure planar means top view rectangular okay rectangles how we will make the rectangles there so now uh, and uh, this uh, the buried layer the buried layer is the the next rectangle is the buried layer here and after that to getting a contact is a is a deep diffusion is made so that the buried layer is connected at the top because you are taking the collector contact from the top surface so this n plus has to has to come at the top so that you can easily take aluminum contact from the top surface so here uh, are, are uh, the uh, in the in the side you can see here this is a uh, isolation walls so that means this is another wall and this is another wall so here you are making the n plus here is uh, uh, sorry in this in between the two wall you are diffusing p plus so here you are creating island and here you are creating island so in between two island the p plus diffusion is there there and there also so that the the islands are are not uh, connected via the epitaxial layer now here uh, i am showing the cross section again details of cross section of a npn bipolar transistors so in this particular case you have seen this is the emitter and this is the base and this is the buried layer and this is n epitaxy and the buried layer is connected at the top using this diffusion 
this is known as the n plus diffusion n plus is known as deep collector diffusion and this is the p plus and which is connected to the substrate the silicon substrate is this one okay and this is p plus and this side is also p plus so that means first getting the substrate you develop this uh, uh, buried layer and on the top of the buried layer you grow the epitaxial layer and the next step is the p plus isolation diffusion so that you can isolate one island to other island and after that next step is the connection of this buried layer at the top so you have to have a diffusion deep diffusion this is n plus this is known as a deep collector diffusion and which is done normally using the phosphorus separate diffusion because is junction depth is very large because you have to diffuse this n up to the buried layer now after that you are diffusing the p region that is basically the base and here is the base contact and in base p region you are again diffusing the n plus which is the emitter region and after that this is the aluminum metal you are taking contact from the top this is the emitter contact the collector contact and this is the base contact now here uh, this particular n pin transistor has been divided into three different sections you see here is the region 1 this is region 2 this is region 3 and uh, region 4 and here is the region 5 and in this first region is known as the isolation region this is the isolation region because this p diffusion you are making such that this p will touch the substrate that means you have to diffuse the uh, the wafer for a long time at higher temperature that is this dopants will reach up to the substrate so this is known as the isolation so that isolation will complete if this diffuse region does not reach substrate then what will happen can you tell me that this n and the side end will be interconnected okay that means your process should be such that this p diffuse layer must reach up to the substrate then this n this n or this n or this is also n n and the side end here are isolated using a p diffuse region here so this is the isolation region next second region is the deep collector region and a deep collector region is basically to get collector contact at the top here the collector is n and n plus region the n epitaxy and n plus buried layer these are the collector and this collector if without this diffusion also you can take contact from the window here but their problem is you have to take the contact from the n to aluminum and the n to aluminum will lead to a Schottky junction not a ohmic junction this is very very important and i will just discuss little bit on this uh, this uh, ohmic junction and Schottky junction for example here a uh, this is a silicon this is the n silicon now you are making a contact here for example here this is silicon dioxide now if you want to make a contact here so you are depositing here say aluminum and the aluminum you are depositing like this this is aluminum okay now this is in silicon that means here you see the aluminum is a group 3 metal and this is silicon now after depositing aluminum here when you will anneal it because after depositing aluminum film you have to sinter at a low temperature to have a proper contact 300 to 400 400 degree centigrade for small time about say 10 to 15 minutes that is known as annealing after annealing 
micro alloying will form with aluminum and silicon and that will give you a proper contact. We are interested to have an ohmic contact, not a Schottky contact. Schottky contact is basically a, a diode, Schottky jun junction diode contact. That means it is a rectifying contact, is not it? Now, here the N is the dopant means here and here aluminum, in N dopant, the aluminum will act as a P dopant. You see, some of the aluminum molecules from this metal film, it will enter into here, into silicon. And over a small region, very narrow depth, the N silicon may be converted into P because aluminum is a group 3 element and this group 3 element means the it will invert the polarity of this aluminum uh, silicon which is just below the aluminum, is not it. So now here is small region of P silicon may form and this P silicon and N silicon will form a PN junction that is that means it will form a rectifying contact which is known as a short key contact. And we have to avoid this short key contact. How can we avoid it? It is possible. Just you can increase the level of doping in the silicon from N to N plus. You can see many of the view graphs subsequently. Some region is written N, some of the region it is N plus, some of the region is P, some of the region it is written P plus. The difference between the P, P plus or N, N plus is that in N plus the doping concentration is extremely high and P or N are moderately doped and P plus N plus are highly doped. So now if you increase the doping level in this particular silicon that means if you make it to N plus that means doping level is extremely high. So the whatever the aluminum atom will diffuse into the thin layer, they will find problem to invert the N layer because the P layer will form when the concentration of that particular the aluminum atom is more than the dopants of N. If the dopants of N are phosphorus doped, N, N silicon is, is obtained by doping phosphorus atom. So if the phosphorus are the doping atoms in this particular layer, then this aluminum must exceed the phosphorus, then it will be P type, is not it? And if I make N plus layer prior to aluminum deposition, then the aluminum cannot invert the layer, so you cannot get short key junction, is not it? So wherever you need an ohmic contact, this layer has to be diffused in with higher concentration that is in case of N aluminum. Now at the same time what will happen in P if the layer is say P, P for example and you are making a contact okay, and you are making aluminum here, then what will happen? The aluminum is a P type dopant, so this is already P type, there is no question of forming any junction. So whether you make P plus or P, because there is no question because P aluminum itself is a P type dopant, because it is a group 3 element. So that means P silicon, P silicon and aluminum will form a ohmic, a, a, an ohmic junction always. But N and aluminum will not form ohmic junction, they will form a short key junction. So that is the reason why wherever you need an ohmic contact with an N silicon, that N has to be converted to N plus, that layer has to be converted to N plus. Now you look in the diagram. Now here you see the, this, here the N plus buried layer and this is the N epitaxy. Now the, if I do not make this deep collector region, then aluminum will directly come in contact with this N. So it very difficult to get ohmic contact, but we need collector contact must be ohmic. 
until unless your circuit require a short key junction or short key contact there is no question of forming another diode there is not it. So, here uh, we have to make n plus. So, the n plus that means this uh, epidaxial layer n, n layer here has to be converted to n plus and that n plus has to reach n here that means reach buried layer. So, that is known as the deep collector region that means here you have to simulate and you have to take the process parameters when diffusion parameters the diffusion temperature and diffusion time such that all the dopant atoms here dopant atoms here will reach up to this and a, a column n plus column will form so that you will have very low resistance path. This is one point another point is you could immediately ask me sir why do you need to increase this layer up to reach the buried layer. So, if at ends up here for example here then the n and n plus the, the contact problem is solved because n plus and the aluminum will give an ohmic contact that is solved. But why do you need this? To answer the question let us again have a small look, a look into the, the geometry that means here you have fabricated the buried layer here. Okay buried layer here and now this is n plus and this is say the p substrate and this is n and now here uh, I am telling you uh, this is the collector for example if it is end up is here this n plus. Now you are getting that means uh, a path uh, this collector and this collector in between n is there that means when you are taking contact here collector so that means what is the path? Path is actually carriers emitter is injecting that uh, the, these uh, uh, electrons or hold the carriers is collected at the collector. So, now, th now that they will the carriers will travel a path from here to here to here and now this is n plus means highly doped region, highly doped region will give you a low resistance. If doping level is high resistance will be less we know. Now, in between this n low dope it will have a considerable resistance then n plus again low resistance. Now, the total resistance is basically this resistance again this resistance again this resistance this is the total resistance say R1, R2 and R3. Now, this R2 resistance since it is a low dope epitaxial layer that resistance will be very high. The total resistance from this point here is aluminum, aluminum is aluminum is here for example, aluminum is here. Now, here you are taking the contact. Now, in order to reduce the total resistance if I this n plus buried layer sorry deep collector region if I increase the diffusion time so that it will reach here then this R2 resistance will be reduced is not is a highly doped that means then total resistance is n plus the buried layer and this deep collector that means collector resistance because whenever the the dopants or whenever the carriers basically the electrons and holes for example are reaching at the collector they will face a small resistance path here and that will improve your device performance the collector series resistance has to be very low and if it is not low then what will happen in a transistor IC VC curve this is a IC this is a VC. So, this uh, curve is like this. So, this slope will give you the collector resistance is not it. That means, if this collector resistance is more then this slope will be like this, here this slope is less slope is more more here is not it. So, now ideally we should make the collector resistance so small that the slope the you will get a steeper slope here very small slope like this and as a result of which what will happen 
the your your basically this you will give you the saturation region so your v sat will be lower if the slope is more then v sat will be more so the saturation voltage v c sat v c sat basically i am talking about that v c sat if it is a large then your problem in a switching because in a, if you use this transistor in a switching mode then the on and off the vc sat is large you want to switch the transistor from on to off it will not be so that is the problem so the the process has to be defined such that or your geometry or technology should be such that the collector series resistance should be as minimum as possible so you need a deep collector diffusion and at the same time you are using a buried layer and that buried layer is this one is the buried layer as i told you now i am discussing why buried layer is required because in npn transistor n is the collector p is the base and n is the emitter okay this epitaxy is itself is a basically a a collector now you have introduced another layer n plus layer diffuse layer which is known as the buried layer because it is buried in, into the silicon uh, silicon crystal so this buried layer it reduces the collector series, series resistance also if you don't use the buried layer then this is n will be the collector resistance now at the same time you see it is serving another purpose what is that purpose that is here this is a p is the base n is the epitaxy and if you don't use this buried layer so this p will be another layer substrate so that be that means you are getting the two transistors one is n p n another is p n and p two transistors that is parasitic pnp transistors and if this parasitic pnp and npn transistor npn transistors and pnp transistor if they connected together in a particular fashion in that case you may have some thyr resistor action because npn and pnp transistor they are they are connected so high current may flow and it will damage the transistor our aim should be such that our 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 geometry of the transistor should be such that that this parasitic pnp transistor has to be destroyed and how can you do it by introducing a buried layer we can stop that parasitic pnp effect why we know that in a particular transistor who is the main controlling layer base we know from our basic device knowledge that to operate a transistor faithfully the base should be lightly doped and it is to be thin base is to be thin and lightly doped and if it is not thin it is a thick layer then what will happen the carriers emitter will inject the carriers and from there the carriers will pass through the base and there the combination will take place will holes and ultimately which whichever uh, the carriers will cross this base collector junction that will be reach that will be reaching at the collector now if the base region is very wide so lot of recombination will take place so your efficiency of Yeah, of of uh, the collector in uh, carrier injection at the collector junction will be lost, and that will deteriorate your transistor performance. Your gain will be less. But you have to increase. At the same time, if you increase the base doping level very high, then also recombination of the carrier will be more. Isn't it? Then lot of lot of carriers will be lost due to the recombination at the base. we have to prevent it and we can prevent it by reducing the doping level of the base at the same time by making the base layer very thin clear now here you see in the in a pnp transistor this in a pn and p there this epitaxy will be a base for pnp transistor epitaxial n epitaxy will be the base isn't it now if i 
increase the base width by introduction of another buried layer and at the same time if the buried layer doping level is very high then what we are doing we are increasing the base doping level and at the same time we are increasing the base width from this region to this region this will be the base width. So, that will prevent the functioning of the transistor clear functioning of the parasitic transistors and the NPN transistor will function as it is, but the PNP transistor will not function that is the purpose of giving the buried layer. So, this is the ISO deep collector region and then another is the extrinsic collector region is region 3. So, this is the uh, this is the region 3 this one the extrinsic collector region that means this N N plus will make a collector and then region 4 is the intrinsic region that means emitter is there base is there and then collector this is the intrinsic region and this region is known as the extrinsic base region because this region is basically used for connection of the base electrode to the external world because this is the base contact is here that is this particular region is extrinsic and that is not taking part in the functioning of the transistor. Now this emitter base and collector the this whole uh, transistor cross section is divided into 5 distinct regions and all the three 5 distinct regions we have to simulate properly we have to design properly so that the transistor will function ok. So, with this uh, let me uh, stop uh, for the next uh, view graph where we will discuss about the design of resistances. In an integrated circuit resistance are designed along with the transistor and we will discuss in detail how the resistances will be designed. The research and development focus in our laboratory has been on silicon bipolar ASIC, VLSI materials, silicon and quartz MEMS sensors, photonic devices and integrated optics. We are now inside the clean room in the laboratory. This is a class 1000 clean room. Some major equipment that you now see on the screen are a high resolution stereo microscope, a 4 point probe resistivity meter and an ellipsometer. An ellipsometer is used to measure the thickness of transparent layers of silicon dioxide and silicon nitride on a wafer. What you see on the screen is a vacuum coating unit required for metallization. A scientist is carefully monitoring the vacuum levels of a metallization chamber. A 4 point probe meter is used to measure the sheet resistance of a wafer and is normally used to have some idea of impurity diffusion after each diffusion step. Now let me tell you something about the classification of clean rooms. This is a class 1000 clean room which means that the air in this room contains no more than 1000 particles per cubic feet with a particle size of 0.5 micrometer and larger. We also need to maintain an accurately controlled environment where the temperature is kept between 20 and 22 degrees centigrade and the humidity kept below 50 percent. The air inside the room is also kept at a positive pressure that is about 30 pascals relative to the outside pressure. To reduce the effect of turbulent airflow, we work in laminar flow workstations which you will shortly see.